The Ukrainian conscription system has been a target of criticism of a lot of Ukrainian generals and politicians, and yet they still haven't fixed it, and units are getting so desperate that they're fixing the system themselves. I'm Paul, U.S. Army combat veteran. Let's talk about this pretty crazy story. So this is actually coming to us from the New York Times, but... Um, I'm taking it from this other site, uh, but it's the title is just troop starved Ukrainian brigades turn to marketing to attract recruits. And that's actually, to me, sort of burying the lead. And while it is a really interesting profile, particularly of the Da Vinci Wolves, and what's fascinating, first off, is that if you're a fan of this channel, you probably already know who the Da Vinci Wolves are. They're a brigade, one of the country's elite brigades, uh, who have been involved in the fighting in Ukraine since 2014. And what's fascinating is, of course, they are really proficient at killing Russians, but they're also excellent, excellent at raising their social media profile. I mean, literally, they are a global presence. Again, you guys as, as viewers probably recognize the name and can probably remember some of the videos we've seen of them, including the uh, a couple of iconic videos from Bachman. So uh, the fact that these guys are taking this this incredible brand, for lack of a better word, uh, that they've built for themselves as a highly effective fighting unit, and they're trying to leverage it to go direct to recruiters, right? This would be the equivalent of, say, the uh, 82nd Airborne or e even smaller, right? Like a third fires brigade saying, listen, don't go to your local army recruiter. Instead, you come talk to the third fires brigade uh, retention folks, and we will bring you on. And the reason is because just there's such a tremendous incentive for uh, these units to go direct to soldiers, right? They mentioned that on Ukraine high, Ukrainian high-speed trains, chances are high that television will be advertising jobs for drone operators, that there's uh, street posters uh, proclaiming that victory is in your hands, right? There's a lot of these excellent, excellent campaigns. And as the Da Vinci Wolves recruiting uh, head, Dmitry, God help me, Koziantinsky, uh, says, he says, these marketing campaigns are much more effective than just regular army recruitment, regular cons quasi conscription recruitment, because we're getting exactly the people we need, he said, right? And what's interesting is that the Wolves are seeking about 500 new members, but they've advertised individual jobs like medics, mechanics, sappers, and combat engineers. And what's fascinating is that these, this is not something that the regular Ukrainian army can do. They still simply say you join and you get put into needs of the military. And the fear for a lot of these young civilians who might be interested in serving their country in some capacity is that they don't want to become in the general population. Their fear, and the article points this out, is that um, a lot of conscripts in the Ukrainian military fear that they're going to be brought in, they're going to get the least, the minimum amount of training, and then they're going to be sent to a frontline unit in a very dangerous role that they were never really, that they never really wanted to be in, right? And the current, as they point out, the current Ukrainian army's mobilization process doesn't allow people to choose their positions, and many Ukrainians fear that if drafted, they'll be sent straight into trench warfare without adequate training, right? Uh, other critics also say the official recruitment drive is too aggressive and mired in Soviet bureaucracy and corruption, and the corruption is uh, seems very true given that a couple months ago, Zelensky actually had to fire like huge numbers of local recruitment heads for accepting bribes, and again, this is this is a very reminiscent of like the U.S. effort to raise troops for Vietnam, where they drafted people, they gave them very little say in their role, um, and sort of just they called it needs of the army. Right? They assigned you to the job that the army needed you to do. Well, it's much different for someone like the Da Vinci Wolves, right? And if you were a individual soldier, there's so much incentive. One, you can sit there and go, listen. I am not a person who you want to, I don't want to clear trenches, right? Then that's okay. I don't begrudge a soldier who's like, yo, I don't want the literal hardest job in the entire military. And they also might say, you're wasting your time having me like shoot Russians in trenches. If you're someone who says, listen, I worked for years on heavy 
uh, diesel trucks. Well, they'll say, no, dude, don't clear trenches. Like, listen, be a mechanic. Get our vehicles running. Because if the vehicles don't run, it doesn't matter how many soldiers we have clearing trenches if they can't have vehicle support, right? Or sapper. Someone could sit there and say, listen, I've been working in construction. I built all these buildings. I built these high rises. They might say, listen, no, dude, dude, we don't want you to clear trenches. And the fact is that as they point out, recruiters and these individual units have lengthy interviews trying to find positions that match candidates' skills. And people can even opt out after a few days of training if they don't like it. This is a huge difference, right? They Because unlike a Soviet-style centralized conscription system, Ukrainian forces are, or Ukrainian units, individual ones, are getting troops that want to be there, doing the jobs they want to do, right? Serving in a unit where they know it's not a bunch of drunks. They, they know they're serving with a good, high quality, highly capable unit, right? Now, there's some downsides, right? The best units may actually not be focused on social media presence. They may be focused on killing Russians. And so you're selecting for the company, the, the excuse me, the battalion or brigade with some of the best like recruitment tools not necessarily some of the best you um the the best like fit right and the not where the need is greatest um you also can't have everyone join the elite units that's just not how elite units work right and there has to be a home for some of those other folks right um and it sounds like the Ukrainian military is monitoring these recruitment activities to make sure they adhere pride to the law and aren't totally at odds with the army. But again, I think this is a way to work around some pretty fundamental flaws in the Ukrainian armed forces. Now, the only other issue, and that's I've actually heard the Ukrainians are addressing, um, is the indefinite contracts, right? I, again, when... Ukraine was in an absolute eminent danger of like ceasing to exist as a state, right? When the Russian tanks were pushing on Kiev, their contracts were just, listen, you're here for the duration, but now we're at into the third year of the conflict. And so I think Ukraine has to sit there and be like, listen, we cannot tie up all of our military age men indefinitely in this conflict, in this conflict. There has to be some kind of plan to rotate troops, right? And you know, it could look like some version of a um, like the U.S. Army's reserve component deployment schedule where they would sit there and go, OK, every reserve unit, even during the height of the war, they said, listen, you come back, you do a year in country. We guarantee you three years back your civilian job and then you get rotated back on. Right. Um, so something like that, some sort of rotation or some ability of these individual soldiers to say, listen, I'm not signing up to spend the rest of my lives with the Da Vinci Wolves. I'm signed up. I'm going to serve three years, four years as a mechanic fixing their vehicles up. And then I'm going to go back home to my my my, you know, the 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 shop that I've been working at. Um, so I think this is a reflection of a, just I'm shocked that this is the way it's come about honestly I am shocked that Ukraine Ukraine's government is is being that inept in the face of its most pressing need which is soldiers for the fight um now one of the things I thought was really interesting about this story uh is that actually a lot of these marketing materials for these units are actually crowdsourced right they actually crowdsourced appeals for labor and equipment. The Da Vinci Wolves relied on a network of supporters to design and produce their ads, and that its office was actually provided free of charge by the Kiev City Council, its recruitment office. So you could see that these guys are really, again, the Da Vinci Wolves are very good at marketing. They've got a whole bunch of people all over the world who spend their own time putting these apparently excellent ads together, right? And Here's an example of just how how disconnected uh, these two, uh, the the formal conscription office and the Da Vinci Wolves individual effort, um, right? Brigade officers at the Da Vinci Wolves complain that conscripts, these are the ones recruited by the Ukrainian government, recruited by official system, are too old, in poor health, and unmotivated. An officer within the battalion said that of 200 conscripts the brigade received, only 25 had any kind of desire to fight. 
He said, quote, our task is to recruit volunteers faster so we get fewer of these people who are absolutely unmotivated. And that's the truth, man. If you've been in the military, you know that if a soldier doesn't want to be there, it is worse than having no soldier at all, right? Because a soldier who doesn't want to be there is going to make mistakes. They're going to be a liability. They're going to, you know, not care about the important things like not revealing your position to the enemy, right? Uh, maybe they're going to start a cooking fire that'll be a sm literal smoke signal to Russian drones, or they're going to not camouflage their position properly, right? Someone who's unmotivated creates risks for the entire unit. It's better to just have like be understaffed with, with a motivated team. And as they point out, the Da Vinci Wolves, right, with 50,000 people on its Instagram, uh, and they've actually produced some some uh, highly, like some slick videos explaining what sappers do and what drone operators do, or so featuring soldiers preparing for a ground assault, right? Giving people a sense of, I understand what's happening. And honestly, the U.S. Army could stand to, to follow some of these guys' concepts, right? It's... This is the more people feel like they understand what they're signing up for, the better off they're going to do. Right. And the fact is that uh, there's even been a open source platform that someone has created. Um, uh, I'm trying to get the name here called Lobby X. Lobby X is actually um, an overall recruitment platform, but they've created a special section just for military jobs. Over 500 units have posted jobs on the platform with around 3,200 open positions. And the thing is, it's gotten eight, eight, 80,000 applications, right? That's like probably something close to this year's recruitment uh, number for the Ukrainian military, right? This would offset their publicly acknowledged KIA losses um, by threefold, right? If every one of these people was accepted. Um, of course, there are uh, thematic hashtags that can help narrow the search. Um, and again, brigades advertise a lot of non-combat roles, right? Like a cook for a military intelligence unit. Guys, MI battalions have cooks. They also need to eat food. And if the military intelligence people can't eat, they cannot do military intelligence work, right? Or a digital designer in an assault brigade. Again, for this sort of public outreach or even potentially uh, helping to design or like like conduct sort of uh, map planning stuff for, you know, folks at the brigade level. And I think what's also interesting, though, when you have this kind of every every unit for themselves in the recruitment world, he said there's some competition between units to get these best recruits. Um, and actually, the Da Vinci Wolves said their competition is the third assault brigade, which is actually, I didn't know this, a branch of Ukraine special forces. Uh, because the third assault brigade, again, you see how powerful their social media is. We've all heard of them, right? We all know who they are. Um, we all know what the third brigade has done, right? Deploying to have Divka to cover the assault, right? And when you have these kind of stories about your unit, you're going to create the mystique that's going to bring in new soldiers. Again, when you combine that with the soldiers feeling or the recruits feeling like they know what they're getting into, um, it's absolutely just a a win win situation. The units get better, better, a better class of soldier. They uh, recruits get to do jobs that they feel most comfortable in and that suit their personal risk tolerance. Again, it would be. And I've, you know, if you served in the GWA, you understand that when you put on the uniform, you sign up for a certain level of risk. You understand that. Um, but to have someone and have some sense that you're, the job you've signed up for is the job you're going to do is just so important. Again, as MPs, yeah, we deployed and we got tasked to do something quite a bit different than what we were trained to do as battle space owners. But ultimately, we still were able to connect our training to what we had to do, right? We found these Afghan border police units, these Afghan national police units. That's who we partnered with. And we worked to basically do very dangerous law enforcement, right? And all my MPs were motivated to do it because this was within their wheelhouse. We were asking them obviously to do a hard, difficult, challenging job that was a little bit outside their training, but they knew that this was what they had signed up for. Um, whereas if they were expected to uh, operate a tank or, um, you know, uh, cook meals, right? Uh, you know, be, be cooks, they would be 
furious, unbelievably unmotivated. Because again, you've got to you've got to have soldiers doing the jobs they believe in. Anyway, guys, that is all I had, except for the fact that if you need a little bit of a push, if you need the ability to do what you want to do and you need that extra little bit of energy, thankfully, you know, you don't need to launch a national recruitment campaign. You just need your strike gum, right? 90 milligrams of caffeine in every piece, 100 milligrams of alpha GPC. Best of all, natural caffeine, right? This is literally, they just pull the caffeine out of natural coffee beans, right? So it's not like this chemical-y stuff that they encapsulate in lipids. And honestly, it it hits different. I don't know what else to, how else to put it. If you've ever taken like a caffeine pill and then you've had like a cup of coffee and it tells you, oh, these, this is the same amount of caffeine, but you're like, no, it's not dude. Like the caffeine pill, it, it like hits hard. It makes you feel funny. And then you crash super bad. Whereas the coffee like really carries you through all day. That's the, that's because the caffeine is naturally derived right um so i spent a lot more money than i otherwise would have to make sure that we were you know using all these high quality ingredients including natural caffeine so again if it's something you're interested in check it out at strikegum.com um or you can check us out on amazon just search strike gum or strike gum energy and you can see we've got packs we've got trays we've got all kinds of stuff for sale so definitely check it out um that is all i had except for the fact that you guys should like this video uh, subscribe to the channel, and of course, thanks to the members of CombatVetNews.com. I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.